I hadn't set out to get the Welsh Premier League, I set out to change a football team. It was more about the process of the five years of being here. For us, you never arrive, you're always on a, on a journey, you're always on a, the destination is unknown for us. I just had a really good feeling, so I was calm, I was collected, but with everything that was then and this is now. And To say if you've been stabbed, I wouldn't know because I've never been stabbed, but it was just incru excruciating pain. So there's an opportunity here to shape something, to make something that's mine, something I've probably never been able to do as a player. Um, and, and I set about that. Uh, I upset a lot of people on the way. Um, I wanted to do things for the right things. Um, wanted the football club to have an identity, wanted the football club to have a purpose. And um, uh, with that value and purpose and identity, it had to be based on being humble, um, being grounded, having values of hard work, um, because that's the ethos that was instilled in me as, um, from my manager at Swansea. He is a perfectionist and he develops everyone here at the club and the development that he's made in me is, is, is massive. Obviously he came from a professional environment himself um, and I think you know, he wanted to try and embed a professional environment here at, here at Cardiff Met. But he was able to change the culture, change the environment and a lot of us sort of came you know, along that journey and, and for him, you know, starting back in, in Division 3, the fourth tier, um, actually going and getting into the Welsh Premier League was a fantastic achievement for us. And then as soon as we were there, um, you know, we, we wanted to try, try and get European football. Last season, I knew we'd get to the, the final again. And I knew when we got to the final, we'd win um, because we'd learnt. We hadn't regressed. And, and we always speak at the football club about on a, being on a journey. And then you've never arrived, because lots of people say, I've arrived now. For us, you never arrive. You're always on a, on a journey, you're always on a, the destination is unknown for us. I knew that if this went to extra time, there'd be only one winner. Yes, the opposition had chances. Yes, we had uh, chances. Um, when it went to penalties, people say it's a lottery. I just had a really good feeling. So I was calm, I was collected. Um, I, I watched the penalties being taken. Um, I knew who, what order we were going in. I knew. The, um, I knew the way our goalkeeper prepared for the penalty shootout with the names of the players and which way they go on his bottle. So we were fully equipped, we prepared, there was no stone left unturned. If one person was going to ever take a penalty to take Cardiff men to Europe, um, then it was epitomised and the person would be Elliot Evans. And it's quite a surreal moment because the keeper went and it's as if like he'd given us the path to Europe and said, there you go, go the other side and Elliot struck it. There was clips of me running on the floor with uh, one of our coaches, uh, Di Bowen. I think it was it was probably sort of the summit and 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 the point that we've been working towards for a long time. Um, so to actually achieve it, to get there, to play in the competition was was pretty surreal, to be honest. It was more about the process of the five years of being here, and I think it wasn't the moment that we got into the Europa League was was the best part. It was just looking back and and the process as a whole. Um, how long it's been, um, how hard people have worked behind the scenes in Swanee, um, in Prof at the time, um, and Becky getting us to Europe was, 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 was outstanding. It had been um, a, a product of 10 years, 11, 12, 12 years for me, but it wasn't something I'd set out to do. I hadn't set out to get the Welsh Premier League, I'd set out to, um, to change a football team and within that football club we had a family, we had friends and it just really was a little bit of an icing. I'd been struggling for a few weeks. I'd had pains in my chest for about um, four or five weeks and being the man thing that men do, don't say anything about it, don't talk about it. Um, they didn't think anything was wrong. Um, and on that particular Thursday, um, I came into work and I was teaching and I could feel a pain in my arm. And the pain was just a dull pain. And we were all telling them to go home, um, but the stubbornness of, of Swanee was going, no, no, I'm staying here for training. 
the, my assistant uh, Taffy took the, he took the majority of the session, and I just wanted to step in at the last bit to explain what I wanted from one of the players, and um, I stepped in and he, he tried to provide this example, and I hit the ball across the pitch, and to say if you've been stabbed, I wouldn't know because I've never been stabbed. To be hit by lightning, I don't know because I've never been hit by lightning, um, but it was just excruciating pain. So we got told on the radio that someone had suddenly collapsed on the football pitch. Um, so we all ran out with uh, the defib and oxygen and all that sort of stuff. Called an ambulance and we thought he was having a heart attack. I was, I was just in shock. I thought he slipped over to be honest. Um, and I think after about five, five, six seconds you realised that he was on the floor um, suffering. I thought he was probably joking. Uh, he's. You know, he's one to have a joke, have a laugh um, a lot of the time, so didn't really initially take it seriously. Um, and then obviously quite quickly realised, you know, he stayed down on the floor. Every time I breathed, I could, the, 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 my chest was getting tighter and tighter. And um, I was worried, got emotional for a couple of reasons. One, my children. Two, the fear of not seeing my children again. And three, my third, thirdly, probably as importantly my wife and apparently the players his fellow players were just devastated in the following week because they thought their coach was never going to coach him again they thought you know the last thing anyone that has a, a heart issue wants to be doing is coaching a football team taken to hospital 36 hours later still there still freezing cold still in the same clothes my wife's next to me I had a heart x-ray, chest x-ray, bloods, cardiograms, you name it, Instagrams, whatever you want to call them, I had them. And, um, and they diagnosed it as something that uh, of pericarditis was inflammation of the muscles around the heart, which was treatable. Yeah, it, it was pretty tough. We weren't sure, obviously, of the severity of it initially. We were in sort of regular contact with, with his family um, to sort of see how, how things progressed. It wasn't as severe as we first thought, which was which was fantastic. The next game was the Saturday. It was live on telly, and I was at home, and I wanted to watch the game. And uh, it was so frustrating. The remote control was in a thousand pieces by the end of the game, and thrown it. Hardest thing though was not being in the dugout for a couple of weeks. Um, wasn't allowed in the dugout. Had to stay away. That's my wife's annoyance. Probably a week, ten days later, we saw him, he came in, uh, spoke to us and then gradually started to integrate back in and um, it didn't take long for him just to get back to his normal self. Within the month he was back, which sums up the guy, he's a tough character uh, and he loves football, he loves coaching and it would take more than a heart attack to stop him coaching that team. To be fair, it was like he was never been away, um, so say he wasn't even at training, he was always on the, on the group chat messaging things, having messages, um, make sure messaging individual players as well, uh, make sure certain certain things were being said. Um, and yeah, of course, it was nice having him back. It was a different aura, but it was also nice to have a break from him. And I think uh, we'd be the first one to tell him that. You know, it's, it, it wasn't the same without him, but he wasn't gone for that long. I'm fine now, I'm, I manage it, and uh, it's something that interestingly, a lot of people have asked this week, how am I feeling? Yeah, fine, why shouldn't I? Oh yeah, if that happened, yeah, I forgot. So I'm trying to put it in the back of my mind. And I suppose I could sit at home and mope and worry and then worry even more. Um, whilst I don't want to go, whilst I'm scared of dying, um, you can't sit, sit there scared of dying and not do nothing. Um, so you just have to get on with it. <laughs>